Welcome to Mining Over Canada. Join the Canadian Securities Exchange and our partners in a first-hand look into our country's vast mining landscape. Hi, welcome to Mining Over Canada. I am one of your co-hosts, Barrington Miller from the Canadian Securities Exchange. And today I am joined by none other than... Mark Stiles. And... Phil Shum. Uh, we are interviewing Mark Stiles, Head of Investment Banking at Red Cloud Securities. Why are we interviewing him? Other than he looks fantastic and we're just simply in golf shirts. <laughs> we're interviewing him because he is involved in the mining sector and more specifically money in the mining sector, banking, financing, all of those good things that help make industries tick. And we're here to find out what's going on. So first off, Mark, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks, Barrington. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about Red Cloud Securities in case our listeners and audience don't know it. Sure. So Red Cloud Securities, we've been around for about a decade. Uh, we're a boutique investment bank uh, based in Toronto. Uh, all we do is mining. That's the first thing I'll mention is we don't do anything outside of mining. We never pivoted to, to cannabis or, or weed or crypto, cryptocurrency or Bitcoin, like a lot of our competitors would be the same size as we are. Um, so all we do is mining. We're about 40 people. We focus in the junior mining sector for the most part, junior mid cap mining sector. So a lot of our clients are, you know, anywhere from a $10 million valuation all the way up to a billion. But really our, our goal is to grow with our clients and find good stories, good teams that we want to get behind and, and, um, and finance and throw it away. Before I dig into the, uh, into the actual, you know, nuts and bolts of it, because I'm leaving that up for my uh, good friend, Phil Shum. Um, are you able to answer why, why only mining? Like why specifically yeah. that sector? Well, for myself, I've been doing banking for about 15 years. Uh, I was a generalist uh, whenever I first joined. And then about six months into that, I, I got pulled aside. And then since then I've been just focused in mining. So I don't have the same techno tech technical background as some of my, my peers at Red Cloud. But it really is the bread and butter of, of Canada, and and I think that'll continue to be the case. It's been it's been a tough market to be honest to be in over the last decade. But obviously, uh, you know the silver lining with COVID is is commodity prices have been soaring, and we've been doing a ton of financing activity since then. We're definitely going to have a career year in 2020, and I think things are going to look really good in 2021. But in terms of mining, uh, Red Cloud has a highly technical mining mining uh, franchise. Um, we half of our team is highly technical, so they're either geologists, engineers, or metallurgists. And that makes my job very easy being the banker on, this, on, on files because I can rely on their due diligence on the technical side. Yeah, so in terms of the types of deals that you would see, uh, you, I think you said from 10 million up and stuff like this. So what are, you know, within obviously mining is very diverse. Uh, what type of key salient uh, sectors are you looking at, looking at? Is it more precious metals, base metals? And then, uh, you know, maybe talk to us about like, you know, uh, size of the deals that you kind of work with and how long you would work with these guys for. Sure. That's a good question. Thanks, Phil. Um, you know, from my side, we do a wide range of financings in terms of size. It's the first thing I'll mention. We'll do anything from a, a, a $1 million non-broker deal, whether it's, uh, it's hard dollars or a flow-through deal for a Canadian company up to you know a, a 25 30 million dollar deal the bulk of our deals are in that five to 20 million dollar space I, I like to call us that niche banker where you know those those files are a little bit too small for some of the bigger banks and we have the skill set uh, to be able to put those away and we also have the salespeople to make sure that the distribution is out there I'd, I'd say the bulk of our business is in the precious metals space I'd say most of the most brokers or bankers would say that um, I'd say at least 50% of the, the companies we finance, maybe even three quarters are in the silver and gold space. Uh, that's, that's usually the case year over year is that's the, those are the bulk of the financings. Um, that being said, we've been actually very active outside of, of precious metals. We've done a fair amount of financings now in the copper space, uh, mm -hmm. uranium space, and, and base metals is starting to come around as well with, with, with some of the nickel companies getting a lot of love given the battery theme. I got a question. Um, you can do all of this online. Is that correct? Um, you had a used to have a portal 
I, yeah. I'm not sure if that still works or, or, or sorry, not still works, but <laughs> how it works. Um, could you talk a little bit about, um, a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, Barrington, I think, you know, from my side, we've pivoted away a little bit from the online portal platform of our business. Um, we've, we've upgraded across the board is the other thing is we've added a ton of different people, including uh, Andrew Kipe joined us a few months ago, he used to be the co-head of mining research at BMO. He's a geo. Um, but in terms of, of what we like to do is, is we've upgraded on the IROC side. So we used to be an exempt market dealer. Uh, and, and that kind of tied your hands in terms of different things you can and can't do. And now I'd like to say our gloves are off. Um, we've got our IROC license, which means, uh, you know, we're kind of no longer competing with other brokers with our hands tied behind our back. Uh, we can sign prospectuses, we can do IPOs, which we've done since we've got our IROC license. We can also put target prices on our research. So it's really added another, another avenue in terms of our business model, which it, it puts us on equal footing with some of our competitors. So you asked, or rather from, uh, uh, and, and I knew your company when it was actually just an EMD company. And now, now that you've expanded, it's, it's fabulous because uh, certainly it's an opportunity to, uh, for us to work with you and moving forward, uh, help uh, spread the word for your, some of your clients. Um, can you walk us through the types of categories of people that you have. I, mean, I, I think you talked about research, you have institutional sales, sure. uh, there's you as a banker. So you're pretty much like full service uh, or rather full, full, fully licensed uh, an IROC firm at this point. But maybe walk me through some of the bios of some of the key, uh, the key people within sure. the team. Sure. The, the first thing I'd mention, Phil, is that we're, we're not your traditional broker. We're, we're very different in, in terms of how we approach things. I know that because I, I came from the traditional brokerage model myself. We come at it from a different standpoint. So um, not only can we offer traditional broker services, so if, if someone calls me up and says, I need to go raise, and this happens all the time, <laughs> time by the way, especially in this market is, um, you know, I need to raise money next week is usually the call. Uh, and we'll try to, you know, that's, that's a short fuse, but Guys call me all the time and say, can you raise me money? We do do, do that all the time. We, we act like traditional brokers. Um, the other thing that we do is we do a lot of M&A work. So we've advised on about, let's say about a hundred different M&A mandates, buy side, sell side, uh, fairness opinions, formal valuations. But the whole, whole other side of our business, which is quite different than other, other brokers is we have a monthly platform to the side of our business. And it's all about trying to get as many names or eyeballs on your stock as possible. You know, there's 3,000 different mining companies listed out there. It, it's tough to get attention and it's tough to find, you know, good companies within that. Um, so what we do is we have a fully integrated solution for junior mining companies where uh, we have a, a non-deal roadshow team where our marketing team, where we have about 50 different cities across North America where we market our clients. We have a, a, a new team that we're working with now in Europe to get distribution out on that side. We have funds we talk to in Australia. So we'll take companies out all the time uh, on non-deal roadshows to go see either family offices, uh, retail investors, institutions. And then we have an alternative capital side to our business, which is everyone outside of those, those different pillars I just mentioned, which are you know, different corporates, uh, private equity groups, royalty, royalty groups, streamers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's one thing that we do is we do non-deal roadshows all the time for our clients. Uh, we don't care if you need to raise money right now or, or never or in two years. We, we like that too, if you, if you want to, because it, you know, it's a little bit more lucrative for us, but at the end of the day, it's really about aligning ourselves with good teams, getting the name out there. So in, in addition to the non-deal roadshows, we do uh, webinars. So we do a webinar, it feels like every second day now. We do conferences. Uh, we, we actually just today are in the, in the last day of what we call our Oktoberfest. So we had about uh, 700 people register, uh, a, a bunch of different one-on-ones, one-on-one meetings we had couple of uh, mining gurus as keynote speakers. One was Ross Beatty, who a lot of people will know, and, mm -hmm. uh, and David Rosenberg, who also talked about uh, the market in general. Um, but so we have non-deal roadshows, we have webinars, we have conferences, but then also on top of that, we have a social media and a media team, uh, which, which really mm -hmm. is a new facet, like most brokers don't have that. So think of us as a blend between you know, a broker, an IR slash service firm and an advisory firm. Think of it, and that's why I call it a truly uh, fully integrated solution for a junior mining company. I don't think there's any other person or group that, that brings to the table what we do. So that's why we've been able to grow, successfully grow our business over the last 10 years. That's great. Uh, uh, 
so a uh, couple things a couple things we want to uh, pick your brain about sure um, the first one is what is it like being the hunted instead of the hunter right now <laughs> <laughs> well to be honest you know it's 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 nice you know it's been it's been a struggle um being in mining for a very long time everyone was talking about cannabis companies for, for so long there i remember being at uh, the, down in Denver at the Precious Metals Summit and Tilray was trading at, I can't remember what the number was, it was something like 200 times sales and, you know, had all these mining companies trading at, you know, very depressed multiples, nobody cared, they put out your results and you would kind of almost have to hold CEO's hands because they'd be all excited about these draw results they put out and, and the market kind of just fluffed them off or fluffed them off, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so now yeah. it's a completely different story where, you know, people are coming to the woodworks, you know, if you have a, a decent team, a decent asset, uh, you're probably, chances are you're getting funded. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's been nice, to be honest. And from our side, we're being very selective at Red Cloud. We have, you know, a, a whole process that we follow before we get involved with a company, whether we're working with them as a, as a monthly client to get the story out, or if we're going to go finance them or both. So we have strict protocols mm -hmm. to, make, to make sure that we do technical and financial due diligence before we move forward with anybody. We've actually been uh, turning a fair amount of people down. I can, I can assure you there's there's a long line of guys uh, who are looking to me and Red Cloud to, to finance before the end of the year. So it, it's, it's, it's a nice change. <laughs> yeah, so it, so if I was a junior miner and I came to you, uh, what would, uh, let's say, uh, Red Cloud's uh, kind of top three things that you would be looking for from me to be able to allow you to be able to finance me? Sure. There's a lot of different things I look at given my, my experience. Like I said, I think I've been doing this for about 20 years. It feels like my whole life, but um, you know, the, there, there's three basic things that I look for. And then we usually peel the, the layers back to, from the onion from there. Uh, the, the, the three would be management team. Like, do you know what you're doing? Have you done it before? Can you raise capital? Uh, track record of success, history of operating in the country. Or, or, or the province or city that your, your, your asset is in. Um, that's the first thing is the management team. You can have an amazing asset, but if the management team doesn't know what they're doing, then asset's still probably sure. gonna be trading at a depressed valuation. Sure. Uh, sure. The second thing would be uh, the assets themselves. Um, you know, it, it, there's, <laughs> there's probably 50 different things that we look at within the asset. Does it have a resource on it? What stage it's in? How much work has been done? Is there met work on the asset? How much money has been sunk into it? Um, mm -hmm. I can go on and on and on on that one. Yeah. Um, that's why well, I'm, I'm, we have a research team to really focus on the asset side. And the third thing, which is where I, I come into play and the banking team at Red Cloud does is the balance sheet. So, you know, how much money is the company raised? How much cash do they have? Uh, what's their run rate? Is there anything funny in the balance sheet in terms of, of debt or converts uh, any type of red flags we point out? We try to, we try to bring them up right away especially before we bring them to, uh, to potential institutional investors and retail investors. And, and do you find that the majority of your deals are more straight equity deals or are they more like uh, convertible debentures or anything yeah. along those lines? Uh, I'd say, you know, the, the, the vast majority are, are straight equity. Um, we do have relationships with guys who do converts and traditional debt, but, but, you know, by nature of our business, a lot of, given we operate, most of our clients are, are in the junior space and they don't have, you know, mm -hmm. economic studies out on their on their assets. It's tough to sure. to even put a convert on them. And you know, in terms of traditional debt, you really only get there uh, once typically you're in production or you're going to be going into development as part of a project uh, financing. So to answer yeah. your question, it is mostly equity. On the equity side, it's a mix. You know, we do a ton of different flow through deals every year as well. We're quite close with the traditional flow through managers. So uh, wait, what's a what's a flow through? So it's basically you get it. Um, they're for Canadian assets. So basically, all we're doing is pack, pa passing through the tax credit that you're receiving from the company through to the investor. And as part of that, you get a, a better pricing on your deal. So there's two different ways you can structure traditional or flow through deals. There's either traditional or there's charitable deals. I won't get uh, too complicated, but basically, you get better pricing uh, if if you go with the traditional or charitable flow through versus raising straight equity. But we do do a fair amount of traditional. We do about 30 deals a year, I would say. We're quite, quite close on that side. Uh, and then on the equity side, uh, 
there's a ton of different deals. It's they're either straight shares. There's there's units with there's a, where there's a warrants attached, and, and as I mentioned before, we can do um, prospectus deals, which are free trading, which a lot of clients like now, just because there's a lot of risk out there with the U.S. election, uh, and there's also COVID. There's just a lot of outside factors that investors don't like the four month hold. So we can do pretty much everything. Listen, Mark, I know you are extremely busy. On behalf of the Canadian Securities Exchange and the Mining Over Canada uh, initiative, we want to say thank you. Thank you, uh, Mark Stiles. Thank you to Red Cloud. And thank you to our audience. Thank you, Phil, uh, for co-hosting. Um, this has been another episode of Mining Over Canada, Ontario edition. See you around the next turn. Thanks, guys.